Today on the Beyond Football Podcast, I'm joined by ex hashtag United baller. They say that he has the left foot wand, best left foot in non league. <laughs> YouTuber, as you guys have heard, we've been speaking about it. And today we're going to be getting into his journey. And he's been pointed out as Under Armour, Next Up, <laughs> Rising Ballers, all of that. <laughs> At, um, i seen what he's got on the pitch. He couldn't really score on me when we did our YouTube video. Make sure you guys check that out on his channel. But today we're going to see what he's like in the studio. So Ben, ben Brooks, welcome to the Beyond Football Podcast. No, I'm delighted to be here, man. It's um, it's a bit of an experience for me. Mm. Obviously, I haven't done one of these before, but um, yeah, let's see what it's all about. Really, yeah, I'm excited. Breaking, see what you got in it. Talk to me then. So, football. So yeah, I think was it was it always a dream? A hundred percent. So, I've kicked up football since I was probably like two years old. Um, always kicking the ball with my left foot. As you can tell, I don't have a right foot at all, by the way. <laughs> That's just a standard. Oh, so one-sided too. Yeah, yeah. As a kid, never used that foot. Um, and then pretty much I was in the academies from like a very young age, uh, Chelsea and West Ham. Left Chelsea at like 10 because the travel was too much and I was in like year six, so it was too much for like my sats, etc. Mm. Went to West Ham, um, got a little contract there. Then I got released when I was 12 or 13. And then I literally just... Fell out of love with the game, really, because I was like heartbroken because that's like my boyhood club. And then from that, oh. I went to a Sunday league, uh, Bucker Still, played there for about four years. Very good team, won all like county cups, etc. And then, yeah, from there, went to college, enjoyed myself doing a football college program. Um, was at Tower Hamlets, was in the reserves there. Um, you know Ali Omar, isn't it? Yeah, I knew, I knew. That's my guy. Yeah, Ali. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a good guy. Oh, he's at Barnsley. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he, he, I, I was at that team, um, Ta- obviously with him, yeah, Tower yeah, Hamlets. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you see him on Sky Sports News that he's got to move crazy, to Barnsley. Isn't it? Yeah, he's a good, good guy. And now, yeah, I'm where I am now. That's it. And that's it. So from that journey, when you initially couldn't, you said you were at Chelsea, but you couldn't go there because mm. of the travel and that. Uh, how did that? affect you i did because obviously my mum used to do the traveling all for me obviously my dad used to just be working mm. um and for my mum as well it was just like it was a bit unfair because it took me about maybe an hour and a half to get there i was getting on about 11 o'clock every night and it was, at, it was at what age though? about yeah i was about it was in primary school so year five and, year, year five and year six yeah I mean, I loved it. I mean, every single moment nah, i was just lit. i was getting like free boots at chelsea just, just everything you want as a little kid mm. but my mum just said it was just too much. I mean, and, and then, yeah, that's that, really. Yeah. Because that's... We have to... Like, people don't understand what it actually takes that young age. Yeah, I know, because you, you, you can't drive anywhere, can you? Just have yeah, to rely on you, parents. You got, it's, so, it's a lot. So do you reckon that like, the guys who actually make it all the way through maybe at like, the Chelsea mm. Academy, because that... Is it because it's really relying on whether your parents are able to... And, it is massively because um no Rhea Brewster yeah yeah so as a I, I used to be in a in a team with him when I was younger like, I've known him since like a little kid as well so we was at this single Shield Academy and we first built that team um Sunday League team and from then like I'm not gonna lie I don't think his dad really believed in him mm. so it's pretty much his uncle that like stepped forward yeah yeah and it was obviously my mum that used to take him to the Sunday games um I think it was Saturday training back in the day weren't it with the Sunday lease it's Saturday yeah, training yeah, Sunday Sat- games Sunday game yeah and um he used to do that and honestly where, where he's right now is just a proper good story to be fair because he went from there to Chelsea and then he left Chelsea I think at 16 when he moved to Liverpool mm. And um, yeah, now he's now he's where he is at Sheffield United, who just got promoted to the Premier League again. Yeah. So I reckon he'll have a decent season. He's had, season his, he's had his ups and downs with yeah. injuries. Yeah, and nah, he's people. injury prone, it's big crazy, time. Yeah, yeah, he's he's had a very interesting journey. So it just shows like you've got to have that person believe in you as a footballer. Exactly. Because I've I've seen I grew up in Ireland, so I grew up in an academy system in in Dublin, St Kevin's Home Farm, and there's times where there's players I grew up I played with who were on my team like under 11s and that where my dad will bring them or 
their dad will bring them, but then sometimes their dad wouldn't bring them because they yes. they don't really believe in them. No. And those prayers were ballers. Yes, and, and that's the thing. It's, but now you can flip and go digs at like 10 years old. No way. Honestly. So you're now, lying. No, you're no, lying. So, no, no, no. It, it's stupid. Now, so. 10. Bro, honestly, I saw it the other day. I saw this wolves thing. It's this kid who's, I don't think he's even year seven or whatever it is. And like all these um, Premier League clubs now, they have um, educational programs at the actual football ground. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. But yeah. I, that's, I, that's like every is. single person I knew, like back in the day, like when I was in year seven, played for Arsenal. Like, they just went to a normal secondary school, didn't mm. they? And now they just offer these programs. programs. And honestly, if Man City wanted a guy from London, Boom. I can guarantee. Slap him there. <laughs> That's it's what, easy now. It's so it easy now. But that's why they had to put um, restrictions on it. Because I know when I was at Chelsea back then, they were like, you can only play for Chelsea if you live within that radius. Mm-hmm. N- now. But now it's I just like, like especially because of the someone. Brexit and that. <laughs> so they can't yeah. really get foreign players in. No, no, no. But when, yeah, it's true. When you were at like Chelsea West Ham, what were the situations where they were just bringing in players? Like, you know what they do? Yeah, no. So Chelsea were good at what they was doing. Like, they had a very good team. Like when I was younger, Chelsea and West Ham were always the two mm. academies which are like the best. And pretty much now it's still the way. Like West Ham under ratings, they just won the FA Youth Cup. Um, but like back then, Chelsea went bad. But West Ham, I didn't really get along with like the head of recruitment there because he loved his like, big guys, and was, I was tiny. Was um, I think it's Alan. Alan. Okay. Yeah, no, so I didn't get along with him too yeah, well. Yeah. Other people love me. Um fellow called Ian Yule said I was like one of the better players at the um West Ham like system when they was playing. And this fella just said that I was too small and that's why I did get released. Mm. And that honestly just broke my heart, which is why I just fell out fell out of love with the game for like nearly nearly like probably like a year. Um probably just all I was probably doing was just playing consoles and that. I was just like taking yeah. my mind off it, honestly. At 12. On the, yeah, and that's the way it was really. And then obviously, but, I just... yeah, no. But talk to me like after. What was the release process so, at under twelve? Because I was, I I only got released when I was under sixteens. Mm. So it's like you're in the academy mean, from young, and now yeah, you're yeah. going through a release process. How was it like so at that age? But they would always like speak to you about who. Like you, you kind of always knew in a way that like if you was always going to get that two year mm. contract, or whatever, because they'll always like speak to your parents, etc. Um, like my parents used to always watch me train. All parents used to watch their children train, and just really just come up to my mum, and then my mum told me in the car, and I just broke down in tears. Yeah. I was in the car on the way home. It was like, I'm sorry, we're not going to offer you a son a contract. And my mum was like, why? Because my mum knows a lot about football because she used to be a pro in Sweden back in the day. Wow. Yeah. Um, is that where you get the left foot one from? No, she's a right. She, no, she was just a smash. She just oh, smash people. Yeah, right, right, right back. She used to get red cards all the nah, time. She used to tell so me. That's so lit. Um, so yeah, no, nah, she literally was like, "Oh, why? What? What is the reason?" She literally just got told that I was just too small, Mad. and then um, I'll get bullied, etc. Um, and actually, no, I think there was another one that was like, "We can offer him another year, but he will have to play a year down." So and my mum was like, no, no that, that, that that's not happening. So yeah, yeah. after that, went to Buck Still. Um, I did go to the likes of South End, um, Leighton Orient. I got asked to sign for South End. My mum was like, no, um, it was just like a bit too much. She just wanted me to enjoy my football again, basically. Yeah, and that's yeah. pretty much those years I was playing Sunday League. I just loved it. Loved like, it. It's the best years of my life, really. And now, yeah, that's that really. No, I. Uh, that's the story I always often hear about guys who go into Sunday League mm. or come out of the academy system and they enjoy it more because it's yeah. they're free freedom. from those demands. So much freedom. And the but, thing is as well, like my mum had said to me, she was like, with academy system football, you don't get to win like hardly any medals, any trophies. You like, reckon? Like, I feel like, personally, I, I feel... Do you reckon? Like, what do you reckon? What? Because when eight, I was eight, at, eight. I signed for Chelsea when I was under twelves, under thirteens. We went to bare international tournaments. I mean, we... yeah, th- there is that obviously, but, but like, in inter- that at, yeah. home, at home, like when you're playing teams, just like on yeah, a regular, it's, you're, it's just development. Un- unless yeah. you do go to these big international competitions, you will win your trophies, etc. Yeah. But I literally was like, I have still have my massive trophy cabinet at home. That I just won everything with this Sunday league team, no and it's just like my mom even said to me, like 
you will enjoy that feeling of like winning something mm. and there's no better feeling than just lift, lifting a trophy really and I haven't done that in my men's football well. yeah I haven't done that in men's football yet I mean the last two years I've actually been playing for something because before that I always used to be in like relegation battles mm. since joined hashtag I've always been like looking up in the table and I've always like had that determination to try and win something and that is probably my next goal in football is to Get some literally silverware. win something because like, yeah. again I haven't won something since I was probably like 16 yeah mm. It's coming, bro. It's coming. Talk to me then, like that period after you got told and you broke down in the car. Mm. What was the comeback period where, or you said you started paying your consoles? Mm. You're Mm. you're doing this. You're doing that. Like, how did you bounce back? So it was probably at that young age. Yeah, yeah. No, it was it was young. I'll probably say like I literally just didn't play for about six months. Um. And then I always do like keep your uppies in my garden. I always had a goal in my garden. Mm. Mum used to go and mentor me for like ruining our grass <laughs> and that. I used to always play football in my garden still. And then when it came to summer, that's when obviously like you and your boys like go out, play a bit of football. Um, and yeah, pretty much I was just out there in the summer again, just like playing football with my boys at Power League. Um, and I, just after that, really, I was like, no, I've got to start playing again. Because like, all my boys were like always like, gassing me up a little bit. And I was like, yeah, no got to stop playing again and then that's when i joined all my mates teams and they're all good players to be fair mm. Mm. and that was it and then being out of the academy system from that period of time did you find like was it was there a stick on like social media or with the group because uh, you know when you get released yeah yeah it's like people look at yeah. you this way yeah i mean i with me luckily i feel like if it happened now Social media would be crazy. Crazy, innit? But back then, I didn't have a phone till like, year oh, seven, okay. year eight. So I didn't really see any of the socials. It was literally just like... And to be fair, I'm not going to lie, I didn't really... None of my mates... Like, on the top of my head, none of my mates really knew that I was actually playing for these teams. Because, okay. like, I feel like I was... Again, if it was now, everyone would know that I was playing for yeah, this, yeah. that, and the other. Um, but it was it literally mainly just like, me and my mum and my dad just, like getting closer and closer and just telling each other like it's it's not the end innit so mm. I just, and then I just started playing again and that was that really yeah and you spoke about them releasing you because you're not like, big enough, big enough. Mm-hmm. it's so crazy how that's how it was back <clears throat> in the day oh mate if you're big <laughs> you're getting signed by Chelsea. yeah no it is it bro and the, the most annoying thing is this player was like so Dead. poor Dead, he was bro. just so big and he only was there for one year as well bro and did, again this fella just thought that bringing these players that were like mm. they say maybe I early was, early I'll, growth sports yeah yeah just big for the ages <laughs> stuff like, and I, like I was one of those players I, I didn't grow until first year of college so I must have been 16 17 when I started actually like proper ground yeah. I must have been like I tell you now <laughs> I must have been like five foot four in year 11 mm. Oh, it's tiny. Wow. Five four and you're eleven. Yeah, I know. Five four is not too. Oh, oh you're really... no, you, no, no, you, you got you got you got to think about it. Like, yeah, yeah, it small. Like kids nowadays were like, and you're eleven. They're like flipping Mad, six yeah. foot five. They're they're crazy. But yeah, no. I, I all of a sudden got my growth spurt. Started going to gym. Um, I put on like twenty kilos, and I grew about. I say like five inches what? within within about two years. I know. I, I literally just like, flew up, and then obviously I started getting like Oscar's growth spurts. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it, was, it was painful, and then you just got to like get through those stages. Yeah, it was, it was tough. Yeah, but it's it's so mad because I was when I was at Chelsea. It's like you got trialists coming in every week, mm-hmm. and we're like <clears> thirteen, <throat> and you got guys who are wham. Yeah, it's you it's guys. Crazy. You got guys who look like. <laughs> like men yeah no it's all, you get like, and, all that beards at like 12 and yeah, stuff yeah like and it's like, like can I see your that's mask? a big determining factor so that's why there was a lot of stick for all those cloud um mm. all those academies because that's why they do all those tests did you have like, any sons of like famous footballers at your age yeah didio drogba's son in it yeah did you he have was, him yeah he was oh. training there bro I was, I, just, I was literally just about to say the exact same thing because he must have been cut up a few age groups and he trained yeah, with us yeah. one time and it's this funniest picture I could show you. It's Drogba wearing Astro yeah, we'll Turks. put it on the screen. It's, <laughs> it's Drogba wearing Astro Turks <laughs> watching his son play football. Yeah. Because he was the there. I remember thing. I was like, raw. Yeah, 
It's mad. And he was poor as well, by the way. Sorry. <laughs> but you might have been, you might have, if you're watching this, you might have improved. <laughs> But yeah. yeah, it's that meritocracy. <laughs> nah, but let's not talk too much. <laughs> yeah. It might be a bull right now. It might but, be having a pro. But that's somewhere. but that's how it is. Like a lot of the sons, they get chances to train yeah, with in their they academy. Are. That's it's about who Just you know. Who they, yeah, it's not what you know. It's who you know, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. You need to trademark that or quote that. Mm. But great saying. It's it's like those those things. That's why all the academies had to say, okay, cool. They checked your the hat of your dad the hat of your mum yeah they yes. do all these tests like when when I was yeah. in the academy they did these tests to actually determine try and predict mm -hmm. that's true what you're going to go I remember it happened to me once do you get yeah. how how tall you're going to be and that determine whether you get <clears throat> offered another contract yeah. and that. especially for goalkeepers oh yeah no you have to be what minimum six foot basically yeah what, like if, they, if, you, if, foot, if they're like, not like, saying or if on when they do that test it doesn't say you're going to be they're just like yeah it's long is there any keepers out there that, that are good on the six foot? I don't really know. Because I know, like, I swear, Kalo Navas is quite... Kalo Navas... No, Navas he? is... He's, like, 6'2". Oh, is he? The only one, like... In... Alisson isn't too big, I swear. It's, like, 6'2". Most of them are, like, 6'2". Too... I mean, that's not, like, tall, tall, but it's... Yeah. The the idea of a tall keeper is, is going out of fashion nowadays. <laughs> that Nick Pope. It, yeah, Nick Pope, stuff like that. Normally... The average height is like six two, six three, six four. Yeah, it's yeah. rare because nowadays the modern day goalkeeper, you've got to be agile. Yeah, yeah. You've got to be able to play with your feet. You've got to be able to sweep up from the back. Mm -hmm. All these. You know you've got to be another midfield yeah. player. And with me, like no, no, I take set pieces. It's so annoying when I walk out that tunnel and there's a mass of people because I know for a fact that you just love to like come and claim everything. Exactly. You got. And when I know there's like a keeper who's around six foot, I know I could put it under the crossbar. Mm, and then you'll get long. Yeah. But however, when it does come to like shot stopping, they're they're, techie, they're they're very good at that. That's what I'm saying. So it's it's got to be changing. Able to do everything. It's changing, but I just feel like that situation with you, they're saying you're too small. It's, hmm. it's, it's tough because that's the high demands of being in an academy system. Yeah. I also relate it to like Messi. Messi's, that's what I was about to say. Like, but he's just one of a kind in it, so I guess. Imagine they... Because they, they, Real Madrid, they slept on it, him. there's that like really old bit of history about um, mm. Messi that Real Madrid turned him down. They did, yeah. I'm, I'm sure they did, in it. Yeah, and he had to go through these surgery, these yeah, different yeah. processes. That was it. Yeah, now it's obviously Real Madrid's worst nightmare, like back in the day. What's it guy? I see it. So <laughs> it's good that you don't sleep on yourself. But I know you, you say you're a disciplined guy. Mm. Do you think those that early experience of getting released caused that? Yeah, I, I wouldn't say I was like cocky or anything. I've always been like humble, and mm. I've always. Or well, I used to always say to myself that talent beats hard work. Only until like when I started playing men's football, that hard work beats talent. And I always thought to myself like I have that talent. Oh, you 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 thought talent would be beats hard... hard work. I used to always believe that when I was younger. I used to like Serious? just ignore every single person. I used to say, "Oh, your hard work beats talent." But I used to be like, like if you have that talent, that pure bit of talent, and it's enough. Surely, yeah. But now, obviously, if you have that talent and have like a poor mindset to the Actually, game like yeah. you don't want to run you don't want to do this don't want to do that honestly you're not i, I know so many players that have done that that are like Facts. stuck at under 23s football because they don't want to do that extra run and that it's, it is crazy now that it's just doing those extra runs and like honestly just like putting a ball to side during pre-season and just doing those box yeah. box runs and this that, and the other it will help you so much honestly you could just be that really annoying footballer that just wraps around and runs and honestly you could probably be the best player on the pitch by even touching the ball That's it. <laughs> I've, I've seen so many stories about of that happening especially Chelsea West Ham where you've got, got guys who've got tech yeah it's always the London ballers as well isn't it they've got absolute tech where <laughs> but their attitude their mindset Stinks. their mentality and then when they fall out it, the drop is harder because yeah, they've yeah. got all these talent but they're not making it there because they seem that the, as the bad. Yeah, they lose the ball, they'll just salt. But you give them the ball, they can probably do Do you think crazy. that's what's, you think it's helped you going through that Sunday league system, men's football system? Yeah, no, 100%. Where you, you can't afford to, Yeah, like, you don't I, get away with all that. They were just. <laughs> especially like coming out of college. No, well, during college, sorry, I was playing for Tottenham, it's out of step five. So Essex Senior League. Mm. And that literally, oh my God. 
Like I've still got scars on me, which yeah. which have like been from like bad tackles. Um, and just that one season I'd done in the Essex Senior League obviously helped me get the move to Bowers, and then Bowers to step forward and mm. to hash, hashtag and then to Chelmsford. It's like you going through those tough stages of like playing football, which you don't enjoy at all. Like, I did not enjoy it. One bit in it. I, horrible, I, I mean, I did. But horrible I pitches. Mylan Stadium with that shot put holes in the <laughs> ground, and it was it, it was crazy. But you, things you've got to do that to like get to where you want to be. It was, yeah. it was so tough, but worth like, every single bit, really. Do you think if you had been at West Ham, you would have been the player as good as as gritty? As you are now. Oh, no, I probably would have just been like... Soft. Yeah, like a little fairy, really. To be fair, you know what? <laughs> when, when I played against um, Gillingham, it was one of my first showcase games mm. for um, my college. Playing against Gillingham, uh, under six, under eights, or whatever it was. And um, that's when I'd like, done my ACL on my knee, because it was a 50-50. I never used to tackle, by the way. I used to always like show the danger into someone else. I never, yeah. I promise you, I used to never tackle. I used to I always be a centre mid. So I used to be like, one of those techie centre mids. <laughs> After that, when I came back, I was like eight months out of football. Um, I come back and was my whole mind frame just changed from football. I used to just go around smashing. I used to just go around smashing people. All I used to do, just go around. After the ACL, yeah, that's, yeah. that's crazy. No, 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 because like my mind frame was like, no, that's I'm never bottling are you tackle crazy? ever again. No, because I was a bit after 50, 50. an ACL. How? So you've done your ACL and now you... Yeah, some people come back and be like, oh my yeah, God, I'm scared to me... tackle. No, nah, but straight away I was like, no, nah, this ain't ever happening to me again. So I literally didn't oh, like really hesitate not. from any tackle. Um, I feel like I don't do it now. I'm still one of those guys that just like love to get involved in like all mm. the physical part of the game now. Um, but there's me being a centre mid. I used to be a 10. And I've just come back, you know, 10 to an 8 to eight a 4 to, to a 3. <laughs> Bro, it was it was Dude, painful. What manager, what gaffer made you go back? No, no. So I was in ten, um, and then because of my work rate, because I used to like always be like fit, mm. put me to like a box to box and an eight. And then when I went to Basildon, I was I, I went to a four a little bit because I used to always like enjoy heading, doing the dirty Mad. side of the game. And then left back got injured, and he was like he loved playing like his left footed players on the left side, so I was the only option where he's just feeling that left back yeah. I just had the game of my life where he had left back and he was like you'll never change yeah, your you're position never again <laughs> <laughs> like, you're, you're though, staying there. even though he's still packed in the free yeah, kicks yeah, all no, of that. No, that, that's the thing my third he's game he's a 10 at heart <laughs> or he, I am no, but my third game was against hashtag um, what for Basildon yeah for Basildon like, no as left back okay and and obviously I probably that was probably one of my better games I've had as well like when I scored that goal against him um yeah, just from then, I literally have not been sent mid since really. I've just been like quite an inverted left back when I want to be. Mm. Um, yeah, I've always just been down the left now, and that's and well, and I've been left centre back out of a back three recently as well at Chelmsford. Okay, but I love getting up, man. Left centre back, nothing's stopping me from overlapping the left yeah. wing back. <laughs> no, but you don't get that's, that. that's what the left that's 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 what the best left wing that's what the le- best left backs do. Yeah, I've just naturally got that inside of me where I'm playing a back three. I'm still overlapping the left wing, but I'm just, yeah. Come on, just do what I got to do. That's it. So that that grit and that well, what do, what's the word for it? Just getting stuck into the yeah. tackles, all of this. Why do you think a lot of people who go through the academy system might not have that? And when they come into the men's football, they're not able it's to cope. Like in the academy football, you get a, taught a lot of the technical work. I think one team as well. That when I was in the um, academy systems that I used to hate playing was Fulham. Oh, they were yeah. so physical. Yeah, oh my god! So there was this one time on my life I was so scared to play. Yeah. In the warm up, they was doing barges to each other. There was so there was Wait, two what? cones you're, running you're... in and barging each other yeah. and going out. I was and I was like again I was tiny. I was probably like yeah like eleven years old. I was watching this. I was like I don't want to play. <laughs> I was bare scared. I was like, That's I the reality want, behind I like, it. I actually when don't want to play. And honestly, I feel like that, that game, team. I, just, I was just so scared. But yeah, like a lot of academies now, they, it's just a lot of technical work. And all the football is pretty, all the academy football. I, I probably couldn't, well, can you name an academy which plays Route 1 or 
anything like that. Or Barnsley. Last really? Year. <laughs> oh, I mean, I mean, I, well, they were, I mean, they say like under 18s though. Yeah. No, they do oh, under 18s as well. Oh, like they were like lumpy yeah. <laughs> when I first signed enough. there from I mean, West Ham. I mean, yeah. Fair enough. You got to... Nah, there is. I mean, all the Cat One teams. Are. Yeah, or Cat One. Cat it's, One. You got to play. Yeah, they're all all teams are playing. Play. And to be fair, what out, out of the let's say under on, on eighteen footballers that are in Cat One in each team, how many of them do you reckon actually break to the first team? One. Uh, one or none? This, yeah, exactly. And none. That's the thing. Uh, I, I don't know that stat. It's at zero point zero five percent of. Yeah. There's, there's, there's a whole different people say this people say that they take it out of context in it but the reality behind it is, is that it's, it's very very hard like for, for example me I, I signed my scholar at West Ham there was 12 of us how many of us made it I think only one of us made our debut for West Ham mm. and where do you couple you? three two three like went on playing first team now what like like league, league Premier clubs. League Oh, Premier no, League. No, 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 no. There's one that's that signed for a Premier League club, but in and around the squad. Out of the 12. Out of the 12, yeah, yeah. yeah. Out of the squad is... What about the two other or three are, they, of them... are they in the football leagues? Any of the others? One or two. <laughs> and then the rest of them, some are not playing anymore. Some are in different yes. countries, this and that. Like... Yeah. I've, I've always... Was, I was so close to going to Sweden, by the way. Obviously, I like, go to my mum's hometown and obviously my grandparents live out there so I was so close to just like going out there there's a um, second division out there mm. as a team and my mum has links, links out there as yeah. well I was so so tempted as soon as my yeah, second year of college finished to just go out there but I was like to myself no, I've just got too much like going on back in England because obviously I work on it's the river big, it's a big move isn't it yeah like? it's, it's it's a big risk and then obviously COVID happened so I was like yeah there's no way Ghana there but apparently those Scandinavian like countries very good for their football yeah like if you can break out for it I'll probably say Sweden's probably the best out the yeah Sweden Denmark Finland and Norway yeah I'll probably say Sweden's probably the best they've got their youth team is hard yeah yeah I know and, I've seen I think Anthony, Anthony Lengo play for pay them. right as well out there so if you don't want to go out there it could have been in it go out there it could have been <laughs> Nah, what was I even saying? <laughs> I even forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> Let's talk about you. <laughs> Let's talk about you. What are your plans for um next season? Whoa! So you want to switch it back up now? Let's Me. Go. We've we've talked we've talked about enough of the past. So future now, go on. Future now. I was I haven't even. I was going to get into how you Off got into spot. hashtag all of that. But for you me, can come back to me in a bit. Say no more for me next season on and off the pitch my dream is to play in the Premier League do you get mm -hmm. anything worth doing at all is worth doing well so I'm trying to push up the pyramid same as you mm. done this season 45 plus games men's football with Margate won the Kent Cup this this and that but I'm trying to push I want to show the reason why I, I played internationally yeah at a young age, the reason why I, I went to the under seventeen World Cup, I want to show really and truly what I can do on, on the bigger stage in the league. But I've I've come to accept that goalkeepers it's a different journey. Yeah, I, I'm to be fair, I don't ever spoke to a keeper about their journey. I feel like There's if only if, one on the one on the whole pitch as well. It's like... Yeah. So if I was told this when I was in the academy system from young, I would have had like a bigger perspective goalkeepers you need to understand that your journey is different to outfielders completely mm -hmm. different so when they're blowing in the youth team 23s getting their first team's chances you're gonna have to grind you're gonna have to go and learn you're gonna have to get that experience because yeah. managers do not trust young goalkeepers no they don't i mean there's keepers that are like still got loan from prem and championship yeah like on it was still like 25, 26. Yeah. They were like going loan to like these national league clubs. I'm like, Oh it is bro, crazy. do you know how tough it is? It is all it like is. favorites, isn't it? As well. Opportunity. But who, you know, mm. who, you know, this season, let me know. This is a whole other story time. I've, I've been to 10 different clubs this season. <laughs> 10. Bro, or even more. Oh, 
I've been to oh. teams in after Barnsley. Obviously, I was on the bench in the oh. champ last season. Initially, I went to a club in League Two. They were like, "Ah, oh, want an older, more experienced goalkeeper." After I went to Bohemians League of Ireland, played against Union Berlin, who are like second in the Bundesliga. They were like, "Ah, oh, want an older, more experienced goalkeeper." Went to a team in League One. Boom. Same story. Same story. Went to a team in the champ. Same story. Went to a team in the conference. Went down now into non-league. Boom. Same story. Went to, um, by the time now, it was like September. Went to Dartford. They already had a keeper there. So it's like free agent until mm. like September. Yeah, just I'm, trying to find the spot. I don't think I've ever played with an experienced keeper, to be fair. That's, that, that's like different for me. I've all, you get, always played with young keepers. That, but... It, it's, it's just it's yeah. just it's just tough so next season back to let's not um waver mm. next season i'm trying to push go higher league i want to get back in the league full-time road to full-time ball baby <laughs> if yeah. you don't know that's why i'm good to know yeah so i'm trying to get in play as high as possible wherever they take me i'm just hoping and praying for a manager to say okay cool Trust he's you. done he's done this he's shown that he can play him give him a chance and show what he can do because that's all you need I guess you've learned a lot as well just playing step three football yeah like <laughs> it's it's improved my game you've seen I've I've learned way more in this last season than I have playing in the academy system at West Ham you will do this, definitely because it's real but just playing those games Tuesday, Saturday Tuesday, Saturday as a keeper like in a game now what do you hate the most like is it when players like, are on top of you from corners? Is it like dangerous deliveries or what? Like, what do you actually hate the most when it comes to games? Hate the most. I, wind, need, I need to know wind. this. Oh, wind. Yeah. Behind oh, you or against you? You see, it's against, against you. you. Taking yeah. a goal kick is peak. <laughs> Tuesday nights, Margate windy. The ball's not. It was not getting past, and the thing is, <laughs> your players box. and my defenders are onto you go. saying, "Dan, you can't even reach the half with any chance." <laughs> yeah, that's a piss thing. And it's like, it's so because it, the pressure's just always on you. You're, tr- you're, I'm striking it as hard as I can, but it's not going anywhere. Mm. It's just that, and like when you have the ball in your hands as well, when you're trying to do a sidey, the wind's like moving the ball, like you can't even like <laughs> connect with it properly. That's I thought that's the, one of the hardest parts. Other than that. Mm. Long shots, really? You, you, see, you have a you lot see to think the... about in it, like what to do, whether to parry it wide, whether to be able to. No, kept... not really that side of it, but they can go anywhere. Oh, you're saying that when they actually strike it, yeah. Do you get? And it's ball, dangerous. Yeah. So I'm like, get always try and engage the ball because mm. it's so hard for us to deal with in terms of when it's moving, especially the balls that we play with. Yeah, because especially from 35 yards, I would say, or f- like 30 maybe, mm. you always expect to save it. Yeah, really. But but sometimes it's dangerous because it moves like the balls we play with the mighty ones. Oh yeah, no, they're crazy, bro. I'm happy I don't play with them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> bro, the ball is it looks like it's going there. It goes there, like yeah. it's just peak. So that's one thing. But back I'm to you now. Talk that. to me. How did that experience, or why did you start road to full time ball? Oh. Um, your YouTube channel yeah so all of that that started at the start of lockdown um, I literally just lied to myself oh, there's literally nothing I'm doing right now like what can I do like you're literally just at home the restrictions were crazy at the start mm. of lockdown as well like telling you you're not allowed to go outside oh, unless it's an exercise for an hour yeah. or whatever it was and I was like I've got to do something like surely there's something I can do so I was literally just like in my room I like a dartboard. I was it just playing darts, playing football in my room. Um, I just thought to myself, nah, I've got to do something. So I literally just like um, rung my mate up, Benas, who he started a journey with me. Mm. Like he was on my first like probably like six videos. main videos yeah. of Road to Full Time Ball. Like in the trench, the trenches, you know, <laughs> you know the see. spot. <laughs> Come on. Um. So yeah. We, uh, literally done like six sessions with him until he went out to Poland to then play football himself like Mad. during COVID. Um, he done right for himself and he went out there. Um, but yeah, I literally just thought to myself, I'm going to start recording myself, do a few train sessions over at the trenches. Um, done that. And with me personally, I feel like I've never been, I've always been like quite a 
sociable person, but I ain't really sociable, like confident. So like, yeah. I'm never that person to like do a speech in front of everyone or like, even when it comes to initiations, I'm always like bricking it when yeah, it comes to me yeah. singing. But now I feel like I'll just sing it. Is that because of honestly, your cause YouTube? Because of YouTube, yeah. it's helped me gain a lot of confidence. Like Facts. at the start as well, when I when it first came to me, like doing YouTube videos in front of someone else who weren't Benass, I'll be a bit nervous. Yeah, obviously, yeah, doing like I the get, intro to like mean, yeah. my YouTube video, like I would want them to like be standing like far back doing uh, kick ups. Yeah, yeah. Whilst I'm doing the intro because I got a bit like nervous, etc. But yeah, doing that obviously, I f- I'm not gonna lie. I don't know where Road to Full Tumble came from. I just all of a sudden just like thought like row two because you always see them like row two road to pro yeah like road to pro Getting, or like on or like the name? game Connor Parsons Hixie, yeah yeah like all of that so road to pro um you trying to you then, switched like, it up and then there's obviously like if you want to rate it to like consoles like road to division one all this and I was like what can I think of because like my dreams obviously be full time so I thought road to full time ball and I thought oh that sounds alright actually um done that just made a, my first YouTube video, um, edited myself. I edit all my videos myself. Um, got to, Final Cut Pro. Yeah, that, you need to, because your edits are hard. I can't lie. <laughs> how did you learn? I don't know. Like, How did you learn like, to pattern it like that? I mean... The I memes, even... all of that. I feel like, I don't know if you can teach that, you know. No, I, honestly, it's whatever comes to the top of your head. Honestly, like, another day... If I record, no, not not record, but if I edit those videos on another day, I'll come up with different ideas. Yeah. So it's whatever comes to my mind. I'll literally just like quickly do a marker down when I'm editing a video and be like, I'm gonna use that meme. Use that. Or like if I come up with multiple ideas, I just do that and obviously see what looks best. But um, yeah. To be fair, like from the start, I don't think I used too many memes until I just thought to myself, nah, people actually want it to be like more interesting, more, yeah. more fun. So it's Less not serious, more. Serious, isn't it? So, so it's not more about yeah the serious side. So. And there is a few people out there that do include like very serious videos, but I want mine to just be a little bit different and just obviously like there's more to it than like with football, it's more to it than just like being serious. It's like obviously being and like making it all fun as well. Yeah, enjoying the game. Yeah, process. exactly. You've got, you've got to enjoy playing the game of football. And if you're not enjoying it and playing with a smile on your face, you're never going to like get anywhere. I'm not going to lie. But um, yeah, just started making video day by day. Um, Obviously, as soon as I joined Hashtag, I was on... I think I was on like 300 subscribers, you know. But Just every single, but every single person that I spoke to was like, "Oh yeah, go hashtag it will help you like increase your yeah, yeah. your um like your socials." Etc. And I was like, "I'm not gonna lie, I don't." really care too much about it. i literally just care about my football mm. um i mean i could have went hashtag when i was in the essex senior league because when i played against them in the essex senior league they've wanted me since then yeah. so they've wanted me since like 2019 hashtag mad um probably not wanted me but they've always knew me and like wanted to like see if i've got it like so being a, being a um hashtag now i literally blew up i literally had about or gained probably over 2000 subscribers within like a day Mm. and i was like two thousand. yeah in like a day i was like decent that's, that's... like my instagram shot up um I, I, used to always, I used to always be private but now i've just left my instagram on open now and um, my twitter um obviously snapchat i don't really to be fair i don't really use social i mainly just like use whatsapp really just like text and that um because socials could be so toxic man Facts. especially youtube as well with hashtag if you had yeah. a bad game long day. those comment sections I don't think I got no. Actually, I got one. I got one. One game. What was um, it? it was when I come back. Uh, I had this thing called scarlet fever. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's just like that. Does it's like it's that disease in your mouth. Mm. And I was finished for about a month. I was like, and I lost about four kilos, like four kilograms. I was what? I was ruined. So I literally like right now I weigh like seventy two and a half or whatever. I was literally like sixty eight kilos. I was tiny. Come back, my jaw was like. Like how'd you get that though i don't know how i got it i don't know how i got it like it looks like your tongue's like a strawberry you have like all sore gums like you feel so ill you literally have like a fever i, I was i've never been so ill in my life and like chi- chi- children i've never heard of chi- this. children even part like after i suffered it it come up on the news that children actually passed away that they had scarlet fever and this and the other so it's like proper serious wait 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 when was this this was october last year yeah i was finished how come I haven't heard of this? Scarlet fever, yeah, nice. No, it, like if you type it up as well, it's it's crazy. Um, yeah, yeah. Suffered so ha- that, come back, 
Yeah. And literally the second minute, first thing, this guy just like jumped in the air, leans into me. I do like a cartwheel. I was like, oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah, bro. And the thing is, it's not only the um, the comment section was grilling me after doing that because straight after that, after he's headed it, I've done like a cartwheel. Geezer's flicked it and the centre backs gave away a penalty. So it was kind wait, of wait, 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 wait. You done a cartwheel? I literally, I literally, I literally, you know, no, like, bro, I was, I was so light. I literally, if you pushed me like with your finger, I probably wouldn't fly in. No, no I was, way. I, I was finished, honestly. Like, I was so light. And by the way, I couldn't like exercise or play football as well because mm. I was so ill. Yeah, yeah. And I think I'd done one training session on the Thursday and just got put into the team on the Saturday. Because um, obviously, I, they was asking me, Are you sure you can play? I was like, yeah, yeah, no, I'm fine. I want to play football. I never like watching football. I always want to play. Um, uh, yeah, and the thing is, it weren't even the comments that were grilling me. Like Spencer, it was like, was he on years old? Bro, <laughs> I, I'm I'm sure it's still on the video. It's like, yeah, Brooksy's half lost a little bit of weight. Um, he looks like he's getting bullied. Nah, and, that's and, the and, thing and, about hashtag. And, and the thing, the thing is, yeah, like it was honest truth. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I did get bullied. Like I grew into the game, but at the start, I was like, I was like suffering, man. I was like, my lungs felt really tight. Like, mm. That was another thing that was like a symptom. Um. I was suffering so bad and like it was just one of those games where I was like I really don't want to go home and watch these watch this video and look at the yeah, comments yeah. and there was a few comments saying oh yeah Brooksy looks like he's lost it um, but then after that I think I actually and then actually the game after that I actually scored actually and got my match it was yeah, just like a little bit okay. of like a re- little bit of a redemption redemption and then, and then yeah now after that I've actually been like touch wood um, I've been quite Is fit and healthy wood, yeah. that's what it always do <laughs> touch wood and uh, since then, I've been quite lucky with like my health and that being being quite good. Mm. So how's being on YouTube? Was that like a creative release for you during that lockdown period? Yeah, I literally just, I honestly couldn't think of anything to do. Like I think for yourself as well. Like what were you doing? Like as soon as lockdown happened. Um, I think well, you, would you was you still in? I was still at West Ham. Just, West Ham. Yeah, so I guess so you was we had maybe these still different gunning. programs, this and that. But it was a it was a tough period where completely like unsettled. Because <laughs> no. obviously you're used to going into training. You got a structure, yeah. and then when you don't have that structure, it's like you don't really know what to do. I so think no one knew how serious it was as well because yeah. everyone was like so by the books. Like especially with me, I was like feeling up like, petrol, putting gloves on mask on i was so scared like even just like a little bit of like i don't know bacteria flew in my face i thought i was gonna get ill yeah no, I, was, I was bare scared that's, that's actually how it was like you're you're coming in cleaning all the surfaces yeah. all that it was crazy like, yeah. it was mad but if you know you you pre you appreciate everything now like it's going through those times it was you don't realize how lucky you are now mm. it's, it's crazy and obviously how deadly it actually was as well like, i did take it quite i did take it seriously um I didn't actually get COVID. Did you get COVID? Yeah, I've had it quite a few times. Is now. it? <laughs> <laughs> bro, it's just like a little flu, man. Come on, man. Yeah, I know. But I've, I've been, I've had to get vaccinated and that, but... Yeah, I've had my two jabs. But you see... <laughs> don't worry. I don't think it actually does anything, you know. Nah, they, they came out and said, yeah, it's cap. Like, it is, bro. <laughs> Honestly, I swear it to God. <laughs> They came out oh, and said that it actually, it actually the NHS, has no... Like, if something happens to me in 20 years' time... It's because like of the vaccine. Yeah, Do you believe there's cons- conspiracy? Yeah, I feel like there is. Honestly, there's I, feel something like, I feel like they just want to get rid of every, everyone. Early. Yeah, population. Population's too No, it's high. actually proven. You're clever. And, okay, uh, you cool. Suck, stop that, in. stop that. Cool, so you sign for hashtag. How is that? Signing for the biggest internet football club. That is obviously... So, again, it was a massive change for me. Because I was obviously at relegation battle teams, <clears throat> uh, and that's one thing as well. I always followed managers to clubs, so okay. I always I wanted to be like in my comfort zone where I feel like I can trust them. Because I have like a lot of people telling me, "Oh yeah, managers aren't there to really trust. Like you don't know what they can do to you. you never know. All of <laughs> yeah. a sudden they might just drop you, whatever." So I always followed managers. Um, I-, I was probably playing my best football when I was at like, Great Wakering, because obviously the um, Manager who was there was actually the interim manager, but he brought me with him when he was at Basildon. He was the coach there. But yeah, then it came to him getting the um, sack. Uh, and then obviously I thought to myself, no, nah, I want to like, leave here now, Great Wake Room, because they was playing a football that I didn't really like. Mm. So I thought to myself, I only had one more club to go to because in a season you only could join three clubs. 
Yeah, so that's I why I nearly so, got bucked with like, that this season, you know. <laughs> I told you I've been to like 10. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. if I didn't sign for market, it would have got long. Yeah, no, it's, it is crazy, all these rules that you don't even know. Yeah. So I thought to myself, I have to think wisely now. Do I just firm it to the end of the season? Uh, there was 12 more games left. I thought, do I firm it or do I leave? And I thought, sorry, I'll just leave because hashtag, they were trying to fight for um playoffs. So I thought there's something to obviously fight for. Mm. Went there, um, got a nice welcome in. I thought to myself, it's a bit like before I did join, I thought to myself, oh, I'm a bit scared. Like, is it going to be too much? Like, in your face with the cameras, this and the other. Um, I knew a few players that were already there anyway. Um, like Luke Hurst. And he was like, no, honestly, when you join, you like, forget about them in a few weeks. Like, yeah. You forget that they're all there. Um, came in, done like my little interview, this, that, and the other, was calm. Again, I wasn't really confident in front of the cameras so it was like still a little bit new to me yeah, yeah. Um, obviously I was doing the YouTube videos but I was only doing about one person that I knew on a regular so I literally come up my comfort zone massively um, obviously doing other stuff like filming that um, you know that Japanese eating stuff oh, what's it? yeah yeah the, 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 the Korean Korean Englishman the spicy Korean the Englishman spicy thing, yeah. yeah Korean Englishman done nah, stuff like that that that, 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 helped, spicy, that helped yeah. me like gain confidence like joining the hashtag weren't just like all the football yeah yeah but um like the Korean Englishman like that video got millions and millions and millions of views I swear. yeah it got bears and like, I'm that like exposure. the I'm like but I'm like the main main guy who just got laughed at the whole video I bro have you seen the pictures I've of seen the yeah, video yeah, it's, it's so <laughs> it's so embarrassing it is so bad but um yeah like they're more than just like a football club though like mm. they honestly like helped me probably play my best football again. Um, like top top people. Um, done loads of bits and bobs like outside of football, like going to like red carpet events. Yeah, how was that? It's sick, you know. It's so sick at that club, honestly. But obviously, when it came to the Chelmsford thing, I thought to myself, it's an opportunity I can't pass upon. Like if I was higher, if, I, if I was like late twenties, mm. I would hundred percent stay. Stay, yeah. But um, obviously, I road to, to full time boys like my. It shows it My shows where you want to be in it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's a f- and obviously they're only going in the right direction. I I personally think that in ten years' time there'll be football league. The football league makes sense. You can see by the structure, uh, on, they're, 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 they're operating better than football league clubs, though. Oh no, they've got media team, they've got this, they've got that. Women, women's team, who are women's team. They're, they're in the third. They've league. built a real community, so they, I feel like they're the future of football. Mm. I think the only thing is, apart from. Like the people, like people will know who they are. Like the real fans who go to the games. I'm not saying the people who like watch it online aren't real fans yeah, because yeah. obviously they are a social media team, if you want to call them that. They are, but yeah. um, but no, they are like a proper football inside. Obviously, like good management staff, etc. Good, very good players. But like one thing about them is that they don't really get a lot of actual fans going to the game. Okay. So that I, so I would what, say what that are the numbers then say two hundred a game. Okay. Yeah. So like I think that one thing as well is that if they do get their own stadium, because obviously they need people to they, actually go yeah, watch no, it. That, that, they, they they they're like international. That's the thing with hashtag. They literally probably have I don't know twenty percent of their fans are probably from America. Twenty percent of the fans are probably from somewhere in Asia and mm. Africa. And then there's like a lot of fans in England, but. Ingers are quite a big country, so they're probably going to be from like up north and this so and the other. If they're so they're going to travel and that, yeah. yeah and, and it's in Basildon, which ain't the most ideal Location. area. I know it's in Essex, but maybe I really think that they need to buy that Forex Stadium. Is that what they're looking at doing? Yeah, I, well, I'm not too sure. Obviously, I don't <laughs> want to say too much, but Come. they need to buy themselves a new state, like, but get themselves a stadium, and that'll be their next step in like going in the right direction. Yeah. If they get that, then they'll. 10 years time they'll 100% be a football 100%. league team no, I, I see it happening maybe a comeback I thought like that peak at Humble signing that was top still jinky yeah, me the, jinky yeah no the announcement for that as well was sick <coughs> so do you think your YouTube channel because nowadays people are hopping on there they're putting the power into their own hands <clears throat> do you think that's what helped you get those opportunities at hashtags to promote yourself get that opportunity at Tom's yeah, for this and that. I mean, the, again, the exposure was crazy. Um, at hashtag, I just talked to them about the media. The media people at hashtag were like incredible as well. Like mm. they really wanted to like push my YouTube to the next level as well as like my footballing um, career. Wow. So the 
So they're basically developing you holistically. Yeah, bro, like, the, honestly, every... they were so nah, good. That's like, top. like they, they was helping me with, like, again, thumbnails, video ideas. Um, they, they was trying to do all they can, like, when I shouldn't release a video. Yeah. Um, <coughs> they always check my, like, analytics and all, all, all stuff like that. They always, like, that, I feel me. like that, that, that shows why your videos are playing now and you've got is. all that. You've, you've basically been been trained by like professional social media you they've been in a get youtube scene for <clears> time <throat> yeah like, it makes sense that's so hard yeah especially that like neil the main um the main director of the media he's been about like he's been like working for like when he's done stuff like wembley before i'm i'm not too sure like, i don't want to say stuff which is like false information mm. but he's a very experienced like media fella that obviously they've got stampy and ed and LP, like they've got a very strong team, which can like, it's, I, I reckon, just like, <coughs> just them, they can help hashtag push the next level because of how good they are. Yeah, yeah. Like the videos they create as well, and obviously like them helping me, I feel like I have learned a lot from them, and it's obviously helped me with my YouTube. No, definitely. Do you think your YouTube channel being on there, this and that, will hinder? your football opportunities or has hindered it um, in any of anything? Because I always get that. Uh, some managers might think you're busy doing these match day vlogs, doing this, because yeah. they're still a bit old school. And people will say, oh, they don't want him to get, I don't know if you know, become elite. That football American no. footballer who does those videos, he's got bare subscribers. Is it? Nah, I'm not too sure. But yeah, he was just saying... When he goes to clubs, because he's got like bare, he's got like five hundred k. He's saying that clubs are scared that they don't want because he's got such a big following that if he put something out like a YouTube video, it could have like a big effect. Yeah, I understand what you mean, but yeah, there's there's a lot of ways you can think about it because mm. obviously, if he did put something up there which maybe one of the players didn't like it can become like a massive thing. Yeah. And obviously yeah. just because he is involved in YouTube in the football industry, it's like, it can have a negative effect. Obviously his intentions are to obviously just help himself grow. It's so hard. I feel like with me, that's why I haven't got my camera out for like match day vlogs. Yeah. Just because yeah. I, I am obviously I f to a certain extent, I ain't that confident enough to just get my camera, but I feel yeah. like just like one little thing where someone's not happy about, that's why it's more, just about me instead of like getting other people involved mm. too much um no. but yeah may maybe it's something that i could maybe try in the future um but i'm that just never that person just like getting a change when we yeah. get the camera i don't think it's, i can do it i don't I, I, see with me you see my match day vlogs my ones every i mean anytime i record if there's anything that people don't like you obviously you don't yeah put yeah it in. you always got like asking it but it does require confidence. When I first started doing it, it's like when I was at Barnsley with the first team, you just do it on the slide. <laughs> like, do you get especially Barnsley? Like, yeah, like big, big cha in the champ. I, I can't lie, I had to have bare, I was bare nervous. But the other, uh, first team players, they were actually quite good. They were like, just do it, like be yeah. confident with it. Like they'll, they'll, they'll be the ones who take in your camera, weren't they? Do you get it? like yeah? But I, I got <laughs> my inspiration from Ben Foster the way he does it, but. I no. feel like he has that confidence because he's been in a game. He's oh, like yeah, an no, established he, pro. Everyone looks up to him. Do you get? So, no, but, he's, he's got loads of confidence as well. Bloody hell. And I feel like the more and more you do it, like when I've put myself out there and I actually like, okay, cool, let me actually do this. It, it turns out better if you and do it like half And other people actually get involved as well. Yeah. I reckon people like jump in your video as well, like exactly. the players wise. And the, yeah. that brings you content. Exactly. And then you can include a meme. <laughs> Nah, he still needs to teach me about including <laughs> those memes. But I, I never want to... With the YouTube thing and footballers, we're putting... It's... As well as, like, helping others on our journey, it's... A, it's a, as well as... It also allows us to self-promote. So yeah. people can now... So Ben Foster, from watching his videos, it's like as if you know him. You've seen, yeah. like, his mindset... His him him in training, all these different things. So now a, a club's looking at him and saying like, "Right, yeah, we want him." Yeah, I mean that's that's another thing as well. I think again, if a manager wants you, it's more about your footballing ability. Like if you can make an impact in the training room, yeah. like if you're a leader, if you're confident, they would love stuff like that. Yeah, that, that, no, I think that's one thing with hashtag. I would say hashtag and Sudbury were on par, like footballing wise. But I feel like. 
I don't know, this is maybe something to do could change room, but hashtags change room was unbelievable. Yeah. And like, you they were so together. Like, when I was there, especially, like, everyone was like boys, like brothers. Mm. It, I think that's one thing as well. Like, that helps you get, them. Yeah. It's just more, it's more about being able to play on the pitch. That's like, it. when I was at Tower Hamlets, players we had were unbelievable, but people were coming late. People just that pretty much there for themselves wouldn't do the extra run, but. It's, it's more than that, man. Like, in football, it's not more, like, all about having the like, technical ability, etc. Mm. It's literally just being a leader on the pitch. That's it. And just wanting to win, really. And just do, do, do the extra mile. That's <laughs> it. So, from the academy system, free Sunday league, non-league, hashtag United, Chelmsford was sitting in the playoffs recently. Yeah, but I want to get into who are you beyond football? What do you mean, like? So, if football was to be taken away from you, who are mm. you? So, like work wise, etc. I work on the River Thames. Mm. Um, my dad's always wanted me to be a captain on the River because uh, my whole family works on there. Um, so they all steer boats. Um, it's just a general like my family. My, mm. my granddad was a captain. Um, I've got my. I've I've done my apprenticeship on there, but I did take a step back because of the football. Yeah. But yeah. if we was to take football away completely, um, honestly, like, I want to see myself like moving out within the next. Obviously, depends. Obviously, if you always go full time somewhere, like which isn't local to my house, they'll obviously have to offer me a. I think to stay in or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I really want to start the next two years. I want to see myself have my own mortgage. Um, for a move up with my missus. Um, obviously, I'm not, not, not start a family j- just yet. I'll have a family like late 20s, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Um, like when my football career is like slowly coming to an end. Um, but probably, yeah, apart from football, just probably work on the River Thames. Honestly, I mean, I, I personally, I would say I'm quite a very, very sporty. So my other sport I was really good at was uh, tennis and table tennis. Spe- yeah. Especially table tennis. Table tennis. Let's go. We're cold. having a game now. I was so cold. Honestly. We're having a game now. You, YouTube. I'm going We're having to definitely... A, you know we should do a video? Yeah, just like a sports day or something. No, do you know what? Tech ball challenge. That's a video. I'll, put, I'll whack. I'm, wait, you know the, I'm tech what, ball Wait, king. is that the um, yeah. like table tennis but football version? Yeah. I mean, I've never tried it, but wait—is it all a sl- slope? Yeah. Yeah, no, nah, that's nuts. Do you I'm know how there. sick that game? I went is. up like jump on a table. Can yeah. you go on the table? Can you go on the table? Like jump. It depends on the, table. on the rules, isn't it? But we need to play. <laughs> that. That's, own, that's a little video rules. that we need to do. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Um, but like, I used to do everything. Like you name, I used to do every single sport. Mm. And I feel like maybe I could just try and like make that as a passion. Maybe just focus on another sport. Um, yeah. That's probably that really with yeah. me. Like, but I'm not gonna lie, football is just everything. It is, yeah. Football is everything. You watch it, <laughs> you breathe it, you play it, everything. Yeah, but you at least you have a, a bigger perspective of who you are. Yeah. So looking back then on that young Ben who got released from West Ham, do you are you do you, are you grateful for that experience now? Because it's yeah, definitely. I personally am happy that it happened sooner rather than later. Because I feel like it did happen to me a bit later down the line it would have hit me even more mm. um and then because i would have been like different with my mind frame i probably literally if i was 16 and that happened my mindset's like a bit stronger so i maybe have just been like nah sub this i'm not playing just yeah, throwing it yeah. away but because i was only 12 um or 13 i literally could just been I, I literally was just like oh let me just listen to other opinions and like just see how it comes about but um yeah, and I've, I'm, I'm grateful for everything that's happened so far because obviously it's made me in the position where I am right now. Um, so I'm grateful for the person who released me. For that. Um, <laughs> uh, but Thank <yeah>. you. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Um, that's it. And uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm just happy to happy for where I am right now. Really. That's it. And you've you've been doing a bit of stuff in the media, Under Armour, Next, Rising <laughs> Ballers, all of that. What's that saying? And no, it's um pretty much whenever I get the phone call, I just always try and like make myself available for stuff like this. Um, because it doesn't really happen too regular. Mm. Um, I know Brendan Shabani quite well. He's like one of the 
like the owners at um at Rising Baller, sorry. Yeah. Um obviously that Under Armour event was quite cool. Hopefully I could do some more of them later. There's another one which is being like released in June, which I won't say too much about. Um quite like a old school brand. So okay. I can say. Um which I'm involved in that. Um but other bits and bobs, hopefully I can get myself involved in just make a name for myself and yeah, might as well just do it all whilst you're young, you know what I mean? That's it. You're making moves, bro. So <laughs> yeah. we'll basically come to the end. We wanna finish off with some quick fire questions beyond football podcast style. Cool. I'm ready. Quick fire, yeah. <clears throat> you ready, yeah? Say no more. Who's your football role model? Messi. What is your favorite football memory? Signing for Chelmsford. What is the most challenging aspect of being a YouTuber and a footballer? Being able to release videos. Okay. If you could play for any professional club in the world, which one would it be? <laughs> I want to say West Ham, but I'm not. I'm not. Man City, <laughs> yeah. Man City. Man City, <laughs> nah, I hear it. Who's the toughest opponent you fa- faced on the pitch? Right winger. Yeah, What's that in? Nah. Swear on my life, I actually couldn't give you one. Even in the playoffs and that? Nah, not one player that would like be like, oh yeah, I'm going to remember your name and think that you're a good player. Serious? Mad. Nah. What is your favourite football skill or trick? Drop of the shoulder. Quick fire, man. Sorry, sorry. Drop of the shoulder. Drop of the shoulder. <laughs> So no, if you could have a training session with my with any professional player, who would it be? Roy Keane. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How do you stay motivated during tough times or setbacks in your career? Sorry, how do you keep yourself motivated? Yeah. During tough times or setbacks. Just believe in myself. Yeah. Say no more. GG, we come to the end of the beyond football podcast make sure you guys like comment subscribe make sure you subscribe to brooksy's youtube channel check out that video we've done where he couldn't really score on me and that <laughs> loads more incoming by the way no nah, facilities uh, on his channel as well that's what we're saying but if you guys are listening on spotify leave a rating if you guys are enjoying on youtube like comment if you've got any questions for ben leave them down below Brooksy, it's been a pleasure, man. I've Thank enjoyed you it, for man. Jumping Appreciate on, it, bro. <laughs> Till next time, Beyond Football, we're out. See you later.